Tuesday video and I just went through my first midlife crisis and the reason I went through it over my first love she today's her birthday she's 58 her name is Debbie I won't say her last name because of privacy uh start from the beginning I met Debbie when I was in fourth grade we sat at the same table I saw the whole year Debbie lost contact got in contact with her in junior high school uh so another school, we went to different schools got lost contact got in contact with her again to high school and then lost contact again then i got contact with her in my first year in college and i invited to my family's uh thanksgiving um dinner and it went off beautiful and uh we was making out in the back of the seat my dad was driving she was not ghetto or anything her family was really nice and middle class blah, 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 blah. so anyway Christmas, we took my siblings to uh, to see Santa Claus. I have two sisters and a brother, adopted brother. And the thing is so ironic about that, at fourth grade, she told me there was no Santa Claus. And I asked my dad and he told me the truth. So she had a huge impact on my life early. So what happened was, we was making out in the kitchen and um, you know, could be young and love and blah, blah, blah. And I was kissing, bumping and grinding. And I was ready, I was still a virgin 18. I never told her, she said, uh, uh, she did it once with an older guy, but basically, you know, she wasn't out here like that. And she's like, uh, I was trying to be cool. She said, like, we do it, come with mom's upstairs. We do it later. And uh, we go to the hotel, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to be cool. Like, okay, yeah, you know, but I was a virgin. And of all the neurotic things I've experienced in my life, I got a whole sheet of paper. I wrote down stuff. That was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me in life. No fault, no fault of her. It's just that I should have been more honest and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because my whole life just kind of went out of control after that but uh that's my why so debbie meant more to me than my family did and i know most people are close to their families i mean and i wish i was too it's not beyond my control what happened my mom and my dad met in college they were young lovers they had me but after like before i started elementary school they got divorced the reason being my mom is gay she told my dad after all that time four years but um I don't know what happened, um, but I just know she was gay, and then she's taking me to, like, I was in elementary school, she told me to gay parades and gay, I'm so embarrassed. One time, uh, they said gay people, uh, parents too, and she stood up and clapped, and I just put my head down. So that's one issue. Then my dad was like, he grew up in a white township, the only black family, and back in the 50s, they used the word nigga all the time. Not like gangster rappers, which I totally disagree with that word anyway. But anyway, he fought a lot. So, uh, of course, his temper, Will Smith picked on my sister. Will Smith got a spanking close to that. And when I was in second grade, I was like a little Will Smith for that time. And uh, he came to the school. He knew the teacher from college. He spanked me in front of the second grade class. I'm still full traumatized for that. He was like, I'm learning how to let go. And he beat me so bad, the teacher stop, stop, stop. And then another thing he told me in providence, confidence, but it's all, it don't matter now. Uh, he told one time he was driving, he saw a guy uh, smacking a woman or something. He was young. He got his car and threw the guy through the plate window of the department store and drove off. So anyway, you know, we all got family sins. I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. The person that irritated me the most was the second wife, my stepmother. Um, I, I was a bad kid. You know, I'm not a bad person now. But it's just that I remember I would do something like leave the toilet seat up. And she would scold me. She could just sit there one minute. She scolded me like for like an hour, two hours and just... She, she banned off me, my mother, everything. She's just that tight. But she was real religious, but she, I found that pattern. Like, that's because you say you are, that don't mean you are. So, anyway, she would go on, like, ask me questions. I have a daydream. Like, you going to do this again? And I would go, uh, no. We say, so you're not going to chance to say yes. And you say, yeah, you're going to do this again? No. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was just so mad when she did that, but I couldn't do that because I'm betting now, but I couldn't do that as a kid. So, when most people look at me, I'm a nice guy, I get along with people, but. I wish I was close to my family, but I wasn't. So Debbie was a sin in my world. I didn't tell her my issues. We just had a nice time Thanksgiving. So anyway, I'm reading off the sheet now. So what happened, I found confidence in reading the Bible. I went to boarding school, and they put me in boarding school. And my senior year, I was like the most popular person in school. Everybody's chairing my name for like two weeks. And then they, they flipped it around. So I'm not going to get into that story. But I became the most teased person in boarding school. Anyway, so I read the whole Bible verbatim. And it made, I tried to find comfort. You know what I mean? Then I went to uh, college my first year. That's when I saw Debbie. I was a religion major. But then I just discovered 40 ounces. That just came out that time. Old English, St. Eyes, whatever. And I, you know, I just trying to be cool. So what happened was the, the guy named Reverend West 
for religion majors. He was like, um, you're not a religion major, dude. I'm here, you trying to chase women and drink 40s. And so he basically, he said, he asked too many questions. Because I read a book called Cherries of the Gods. And I asked him about that in class. And it was talking about aliens may have started these religions. And he, trust me, once people get pro, not, not sure I say that word. Once people believe in something, they only believe in um, uh, uh, what they've been taught. So anyway, so anyway, I, I move on. Uh, sorry, excuse me for a second. When I was a freshman, I collected mill tickets. I was the only freshman that did that. And I would collect the mill tickets. I, mean, I talked to everybody. I ran for class president. I came second. I was very dis disappointed. I went and woke up to president of college at night. <laughs> they were nice. They were milk and cookies and tell me, don't worry, next time. And so anyway, and then I took public speaking to make up for that. And I gave a silly speech and I failed that class. So I lost my interest in college. But one thing that really that ended my relationship with Debbie, I called up one time. I was coming, I was in the dorm and then on the payphone and they said, you got a call. So I saw my buddies. I was a show off because I show off a lot because I have family issues. I felt like maybe it's comfort to get love from other places. So I was showing off with the guys in the hallway and Debbie was very mature and I kind of ended that relationship. So anyway, I found something in the magazine called Good Ship of Hope. I'm naive. So they said you could travel around the world and you work on the ship. So I told my dad, he had two other kids, so he spent more energy on them. And he was like, okay. And he said, what do you need? Like $100? So they told me to suburban station, my adopted brother. And I went to New York, not knowing where I was spending the night or anything. And then um, I, I went to, I, I'm very social. I asked the guy, he told me I'd come to the house for young runaways or whatever. And I was, in, I was 18. But anyway, I went there, and every week I went to the harbor looking for this good ship and never came. I asked people, never heard of it. So I, I lost my innocence by being naive. And then I really lost my virginity because I'm hanging out with these young guys who grew up way rougher than me. You know, been in Rikers Island, group homes, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm trying to fit in and be cool. And then um, one night we missed Covenant House, so we had to sleep out in Central Park. I know it sounds crazy. This is my life story. And uh, but while we was walking to Central Park in this area, they had this, um, I hate to say it because I feel embarrassed by it. But it's a black prostitute. I wasn't even planning on it. He was like, yo, she's uh, da 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 da. So I had money. He didn't have no money. And but he, he he said, go ahead. So I didn't tell him I was a virgin. I didn't tell the prostitute. And that's how I lost it. And I'm embarrassed by that. But um I had plenty of growth since then. And um uh bear with me. So Debbie, that situation reminded me of the movie Forrest Gump. You know, after the uh, my life spiraled downhill and I've learned with letters about my misadventures, you know, I hitchhiked down south, I hopped freight trains. I went to jail uh, for a month because I met this con artist, Professor Con artist in, um, in the men's shelter. And he, he said, he said, you look at my looks, my energy, and I'm um, 18. He's looking at me, 19 rather. And uh, he was like, dude, you, and he's, he told me how to do it. And he did it like four or five times and he got away. Then the last time he did, we drank wine too much. I was in White Tower. And one of the scariest moments of my life, these cops came in and like three or four point guns at both of us. They said, don't you effing move. It took me in jail. I tried to look scared. I'm lucky nothing happened to me. I got out. I never been in jail since, and never saw home again. But anyway, so what happened was I got readmitted back to college. My buddy Kevin. I'm, I'm talking about him real quick. Hopefully, this will be my best video because this, I'm sharing a lot of personal information. Kevin uh, was filling out an application. He was a young guy, smart. We were both in the shelter. We were both teenagers, and uh, hanging out with him a lot. And he filled out an application to go back to school or something. I forgot my uncle. Uncle Herb paid my student loan. I didn't ask him to, but he paid because he had no kids and he feel he, he you know he paid my student loan. So I got accepted back. Kevin didn't. So I took him back to college on the weekend one time. I was drinking. My dad used to drink a lot, and I, I can't blame him. You know the sense of the parents, but I got the habit too. I don't do it now. And then um, I was driving six miles an hour. And my dad used to say I got a guardian angel. I hitchhiked in Tennessee. I drove six miles an hour. I missed a tree by a foot. I drove off the road. But Kevin, me, and my roommate, we all got killed, but I don't know. Then another incident happened one time. I was my last year in college. I was walking down Broad Street with him, and he hanging out with him trying to boost his spirit. Out of nowhere, cops came on and drove on the sidewalk, sidewalk and pointed guns at me like, you, get on the ground now. And I was like, yo, what did I do? What did I do? And the handcuffed me, put me back in the car, and I heard on the dispatcher, I had like red, black shorts and red shirt. They had a rape suspect in the area. And had like uh, red pants and black shirt. And you know what? The cop unhandcuffed me. They go to me in jail for that. Somebody didn't even do. And he was like, yo, you stay out of trouble. And this only time I talked back to a cop, I said, wait a minute. I'm a senior in college. I'm an army reserve. What's wrong with you? You know, you, you got, uh, uh, if I knew that then, well, I know now, I would sue them. I would, that was totally wrong. Anyway, then I got in contact with Debbie for like the millionth time, another chance. 
And this is true. I'm uh, something's wrong with me. So I'm thinking I got another chance with Debbie. And uh, she said, oh, that's good. You got readmitted? Okay, I'm going to come by your house. And uh, I'm going to bring a friend or well, her girlfriends. And you would think a person after many chances I had, I, I would be smart. Don't you know I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt? I'm already a teen, uh, college alcoholic. So I'm drinking. I have 40 ounces right here. I was already drunk. I'm listening to punk rock music. It's called the Dead Kennedys. She came by and I was all high. I said, hey, Debbie, it's been a while. How you been? That's the last time I Well, that's not the last time. I saw her 10 years later and she told me she got married. I saw her in the library. I just bumped her for like, and I was like, I tried to play off like, oh, that's congratulations. And then when she left, I, I don't think Mike Tyson punched her hurt me more. But she, was she supposed to wait for somebody who's just wilding out? No. So anyway, uh, moving on. And then, believe it or not, I became a social worker. And then I met another girlfriend. She lived with me for 15 months. Her name was Veronica. Okay. And we got along great, but she was 22. She already lived with a guy uh, 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 in California. And he beat her up and, and put her in a hospital. I was so mad, so much in love with her. I was ready to go to California. I'm not gangster, but I was, well, you can read in between the lines. And she said, no, no, just forget it. And then um, we broke up after 15 months because drinking was the problem with me. And even though I was a social worker, uh, she was a beautiful person. All my girlfriends smile a lot. And I smile a lot. I'm really happy. But my family problems plagued me. And I had to learn to let go. And that's why I'm making this video. So anyway, I was always on the ball. I like showing off. So when she left me, I got, 